Hi everybody, Scott here. Um, drinking another tea today. Uh, another cold day. Um, woke up, stomach was a little bit off. And um, I thought to myself, wow, I'm definitely gonna drink an old ripe tea today. And if I'm gonna drink an old ripe tea today, why not at least share the experience with everybody? Um, or at least those of you who are watching, AKA everybody everybody in my world. Um, and today we're going to be drinking the 1990 CNMP 7.3 Brick. So 1990 7.3 Brick ripe for, and it's one of the oldest ones that we have. Um, let me just read you kind of the, the description that I wrote because I think it's fairly good. Lucy's waiting over here. Come here, Lucy. Oh, there you go. Um, this is a 1990 release from the Kunming Tea Factory of the classic uh, 7.3 brick or 1973 brick. The 7.3 brick is the first ripe pour release by CNMP. Um, again, now this is the 1990 version of it. It's not the 1973 version of it, but it's the same blend. Ripe pour wo doi wet piling process was first widely undertaken in the early 1970s in Yunnan to fast age poor tea, making it less bitter and making it less bitter and less astringent, make, uh, thereby making it more palatable and accessible. In the first decade of ripe pour production, it was not well received, and raw pour was produced in much larger quantities. By the mid to late 1980s, ripe pour gained in popularity as people in Guangdong, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Malaysia began to appreciate the unique and mellow character of ripe teas. The 7.3 brick is a prototype of ripe pour. The simple blend of grade one through nine leaves is still one of the best blends in existence. Our 1990 7.3 brick was aged in Kunming since its production Due to this very clean and relatively dry storage condition, the tea has aged. Uh, the tea has aged the process of curing and retains an incredibly clear and crisp taste. It's very strong in the mouth, and the chachi is very pervasive without being unpleasant or overpowering. If this brick had been in a wet storage environment, it would have very little chachi, and the complex dried fruit, spice, and musk taste it has would not be present at all. Would not be present at all. After aging 27 years in Kunming. This tea has a story to tell. So anyways, that's, you know, I figured that was kind of one of the longer uh, write-ups. And I, I knew that if I just tried to wing it and kind of pull tidbits out, I would forget some important points. So um, again, I said 27 years. This was written in, obviously in uh, 2017. So um, at this point, um, the tea is going to be... You know, we're in early 2019 now, so, you know, technically probably close to 29 years of age at this point. Um, wow. It's just age, age smell. I don't know how to describe it, age smell. You can just smell it. It's got a really strong smell, this tea. And I'm going to, I'm going to drink the wash. This is super clean tea. I'm not at all, you know, worried about it. Got Lucy waiting down here. Lucy, you want another little piece of cookie? Come here. Come here, you gotta get it. Oh, she's, she doesn't wanna get it. She wants me to give it to her. Come on. All right. Come here. You're lazy. Oh yeah. All right. And again, I'm going to stack up some. Um, I'm going to stack up some uh, cups here. Not stack them, but um, the steeps. I'm just going to do one after another. Let them cool a little bit, and then we're going to go through them. But this, um, along with the 1990 um, CNMP 9016 tool, uh, which is also 250 grams and fairly similarly priced. These are the two oldest teas that we sell um, on Yunnan sourcing. So 
um, you know, they're, you know, ripe teas, if they were sheng pours, they would probably be 10 times the price. Um, people are always asking me about 90, early 90s or 80s sheng pours. I'm like, well, what's your budget? Do you have five, 10, $15,000? Because if you don't, you're not gonna get a legit one. That's just the way it is. Um, early 2000s, yeah, maybe you, you could uh, get a cup, you know, for a thousand or 2000, but definitely not any kind of like name brand, as it were, not a Mong Hai Tea Factory tea or one of the classic teas. I mean, even like that 2003 three-star Lao Banjang tea from Mong Hai Tea Factory, the large cabbage organic symbol one is, I mean, I think that's going for, oh gosh, I don't know, six, six thousand dollars now or seven thousand dollars, something like that. I mean, and that's a 2003. So, yeah, I mean, obviously that's one of the more famous ones, but, um, I'm gonna put this back in. Sorry, I'm not talking about the tea because I haven't drank it yet. Um, this is a nice blend here. There's definitely some stems floating on the top, but this, like I said, the 7-3 brick is one of the classic, you know, kind of like multiple grade leaf um, blends. So it's to be expected. And that's actually, in terms of complexity, um, having all those different leaf grades is really a good thing. I'm gonna tr give this a try. See, I don't need my thermometer. Mm. Oh my God. It's like it's just so velvety smooth and soft too. I mean, that's the wash, but oh my gosh. It's like oily, creamy, super smooth, super, super smooth. And uh, it's just that age taste. I don't know. I mean, how do you describe it? I don't really know how to describe it. Maybe people who have drank this tea and drank like the 9016 tea can maybe put it into words better than me in terms of the taste and the aroma. To me, it just tastes like age ripe pour like dry age, like nicely, you know, dry age, no wet sock, no, you know, I had some Guan, no, Taiwan stored Chato that were like 20 something, 25 years old or something like that. And they were super smooth and sweet, but they had this like, kind of like dirty athletic sock kind of like smell to them, which really turned me off. The smell of this is just magnificent. It's like, just like, yeah, I don't know how to, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, mm. oh yeah, like, it's like got a little crisp bite to it too. It's almost like a dry, Christmas that follows it with a velvety, smooth, creamy, oily. Up front, I'm gonna hit these harder. It's really cold today, so these are these cups are cooling down fast. Uh, steep three. Mm. I slurped that a little bit, not for the taste, but simply because it was hot. I want to burn myself. You can see I kind of put my microphone down here today. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and nice tea soup too. Um, this one tends to be more of like a brown. It's it's definitely brown red, um, brown and burgundy, but it just tends to be less burgundy and a little more brown, which, you know, I don't. There's no I in my idea. There's no ideal tea soup other than it shouldn't be too cloudy. Hmm. 
so smooth and stable too. Like all these steeps have just been, other than the wash obviously, which was a little bit weaker. All right, let's keep going here. It's interesting, this T2 also has a little bit of a different character than the um, 9016, which tends to be a little bit tippier. This is a little bit larger leaf. This one is also um, not nearly as tightly compressed at this point. Um, Tocha are typically really tightly compressed, whereas Brick T um, depends. This one seems to have kind of opened up over the years. As things um, age, they tend to lose compression. Excuse me. Uh, hi, Lucy. You want a cookie? Come here. Come here. Come here. It's right here. I'm going to put it right here. Come on. Look. Get it. Come on. It's right here. Oh, yeah, I dropped it. Never mind. All right. Let's drink this one. Mmm. So smooth and just like, but it, it's still, it's really active in the mouth too. Like it's, you feel it, you get the, you get this, the, the, the side of the tongue thing, a little bit of the mouth watering thing. You get the oils, you get the, uh, the yoga and you get the, the feeling, you know, in your mouth staying there. Um, this tea is definitely really quite potent too, in terms of flavor. Um, Chachi, I would say not potent, not strong, but um, definitely there is a little bit of a, an effect from the Chachi, I notice. Kind of sits, kind of sits here. It's, it's a little bit, it's, it is a little bit heady for me, but maybe that's just me today. I'm also feeling it like, you know, down in here. It's really soothing. My stomach, I don't know what happened, but my stomach was not so good the last 24 hours or so. All right. So we got steps, step, 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 step. steep six. I guess that's a tongue twister. Steep six, steep six, steep. Sixth steep. Steve six, sips, sixth steep. Something like that. That could be a tongue twister. It doesn't make any sense. Um. Mm. Wow. Sweet, fruity, really noticing that fruit more. In the beginning, it was more just like this aged taste and like more of like a oily, and I mean that in a nice and like a, the best possible way, oily. Oh, uh oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm feeling it. Yeah, I like, that's what I like. Oh, and I'm getting that, you know. Lucy's waiting over here. I'm getting that just kind of calm, goosebumpy feeling. Mm. All right, Lucy, come here. Oh, look, two pieces. Come on, get it. Get it. You can get off your bed to get that. Get it. I'm not getting it for you. Yep. Very, very spoiled little dog here. And tomorrow, Lucy, Lucy will be eight years old. She's a good girl. All right, I'm going to wait on this. Push it a little bit. Get it, Lucy. Get it, come on. <laughs> Good girl, come here. You wanna sit with me? Nope. She's like, I don't wanna sit with you. 
Um, seven. Doesn't really matter which cup I put it in, but it's good. It helps me keep track. You know, seven. All right. This is an interesting tea, I think, because it's quite, the compression is really quite loose. So it's interesting, I think, how, and I've said this obviously probably many, many times, but how, um, you know, more tightly compressed teas will steep longer. And it's simply because they just come out more gradually. And sometimes the difference is really subtle because you can still really taste it, even though it's still fairly tightly compressed. It's not boring. Whereas this one, the compression, well, and also the way I took it apart, um, they also used some stuff that had already been pulled off of it. Um, yeah, no compression at all on this, on this, um, on this tea. Go ahead and drink this. Hmm. Ah, ripe poor. I've met a lot of people who do not like ripe poor, and I've met a lot of people who only ripe, like ripe poor. Um, and I've met a lot of people that, as they've aged, they tend to like ripe poor more. They tend to drink ripe poor more. I'm drinking it because my stomach is off, and it's super cold outside, and... In Chinese medicine, they believe that, um, and I could be wrong, but they say that uh, sheng poor, especially young sheng poor, um, can be very cooling um, and humidifying to the stomach or something like that. They say wei han, um, which means that, I don't really understand that, but that it has too much, too much, Humidity, I think, or something like that in the in the stomach. Um, but there's something to it. Whether it's, you know, the way that they describe it doesn't necessarily make sense to me because I'm not um, particularly well versed. I actually went to China with the idea that I would learn Chinese and then study Chinese medicine, uh, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. And I started learning Chinese and. And then dropped out of dropped out of school to um, kind of really pursue poor more because I was spending all day every day in in the Chinese tea market in Kunming and I was like learning Chinese way faster than I was in school. Um, but yeah, although I learned Chinese, I didn't pursue the whole TCM thing. So, um, yeah, if anybody is a TCM person, maybe they can comment below about um, the Wei Han thing, the stomach uh, thing. But I've also noticed, too, that it, um, as I've um, eaten more fats and more protein, I switched a little bit away from a, like a low-fat diet to, like, you know, not a high-fat diet, but definitely more fats. And um, I find that overall, then my stomach has almost no problems anymore with sheng poor. So, but you know, that's just me. I don't know. Everybody's different. That's the whole. That's exactly, and that's why, you know, what's under interesting about these teas is how they affect different people, and how some people, I've come across people who um, who will taste wu dui like. Uh, wet pile taste and like 10 year old tea or six, seven year old ripe tea and, and other people who can't taste it at all after like two, three years of storage. So everybody's palate's different. Everybody's body's different. And you know, there's no, that's the thing is you have all these people who are really into their diets and into their this and that. And it's like, well, it's not one size fits all. If it was one size fits all, I think we'd probably, you know, as if everybody had the same constitution and required the same diet and the same lifestyle, then we probably would have it figured out pretty well, but we don't. So anyways, believe me, I'm not preaching. 
Mmm. Very nice. There's nice like that that now that we're going to eighth eighth steep, it's definitely it's definitely lost um, a bit. I don't I don't want to sit here and tell you that this can go twenty steeps because it's not a tea that can go twenty steeps in my opinion, at least not the way that I steep it. Um, but the eighth infusion here has a nice mineral sweetness to it, and it's definitely not la it's definitely not um, you know uninteresting at this point, not even close. Um, but I'm probably going to leave it here and because I'm going to have to push it again and, you know, that's, I don't want to make you sit there and watch and me ranting and going off on tangents again about this, that, and the other thing. But again, uh, 1990, CNMP 73 brick, um, Kunming stored, highly recommended, one of the ties for the oldest tea that we sell, um, and it comes in just over a dollar a gram, which I think is really not a bad deal considering its age and just how tasty and smooth the tea is. It's, it's, I find it to be very calming. I find it to be like medicinal, really. Um, but more than that, it just tastes really, it's really pleasant and incredibly unique. So uh, check it out. And um, we'll put the information uh, in the description below so you can, you know, click, click on over the website if you want to check it out. It's definitely worth uh, getting a sample. Um, I do believe we offer 10 gram samples, so, I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money to try this tea. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.